Hey folks, my name's Ed Trevers. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm an Anglican priest serving in the beautiful parish of St. Margaret of Scotland that sits on the ancestral and on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Gwe. First, thanks to David Dole at the Rational National for doing uh, a video on this. I need to give you a little bit of a background about Canadian, the Canadian government before we jump too deep into this though. Um, Parliament here, uh, many parties have, many parties hold seats in our Parliament. The Liberals hold, the, the Liberals hold the most seats, but it's less than 50%, which means they have formed a minority government. The Conservatives come after them, then the NDP, then the Bloc, I think the Greens might even have a seat or two, and there I think there's a few independents. What this means is that should a liberal confidence motion, like the budget bill that's being presented today, be defeated. Because even though every liberal may vote for the bill, if everybody else votes against it, they lose. And if they lose a confidence vote, it triggers an election. They, they, they cannot maintain their, their government. They cannot maintain their, their position as a minority government. An election must be called. Minority governments don't tend to last that long because the, the government is continuously out there looking for support for all these bills that they pass. They have to look for support amongst the opposition parties. And should the opposition parties just all decide to dig their heels in, they can force an election to be triggered. With all that being said, last month, the NDP and the Liberal Party, they met. And the NDP agreed, the New Democratic Party, agreed that they would support the Liberal minority government until 2025. So long as the, 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 what's being presented is within the boundaries that they've set forth in their agreement, they will support the Liberal Party until 2025. Now, it's not a coalition. It's just a contract of support. It's, we'll be there for you so long as you're with inside, so long as you keep your promises, so long as you agree to this platform. In exchange for that support, the Liberals have agreed to push forward something that the NDP had campaigned for on the last during the last election, a Canadian dental plan. Now, it's not universal dental care for everybody in Canada, but it's a start. It's better than what we currently have, which is basically every family for themselves or every person for themselves. It'll provide help and support to many Canadians, including this one and my family. Recently, Jagmeet Singh, who is the leader of the New Democratic Party, was interviewed on CBC on a show called Power in Politics. And the interviewer, she asked him, aren't you afraid that this is going to hurt your chances of forming government, of becoming prime minister? And he says, no, I don't think so. I think, the, I think the people understand what we've done here. And she said, yes, but you achieve this promise, this dental plan through the liberals. Why wouldn't we just vote for the liberals next time instead of voting for you? And he goes on, he gives a, a good explanation as to why. He gives a pretty reasoned explanation as to why he thinks the voters will understand what has happened and what's transpired and who actually gave them this dental plan. But then he says something, I swear, you can almost hear angels singing as he said these words. But even if they don't, even if the voters don't understand what's happened, even if the voters turn against us, even if the voters don't have confidence in us, we know that we delivered something important to the people of Canada. We know that even if this costs us the opportunity to form the next government or for me to become prime minister, at the end of the day, we have been of service to the Canadian people and we delivered something that they really needed. Again, ah. It's not about authority. It's not about seizing power. It's about service. That's what public leadership is. We who step into the role of leaders, we are called to serve the people we lead. 
We are called to be the servant of those we have authority over. It's not about the power. It's not about the authority. It's about what we can use it for, how we can use it to the benefit of those who are most in need in our communities. I really wish I heard this sentiment from more politicians who actually believed it. Now, I'm not here to argue for Jagmeet Singh. I'm not here to argue for his policies or his ideologies. I'm simply saying, I'm simply saying that this is a fine, this would be a fine example of a servant ruler, a servant king or queen or president or prime minister, a person who doesn't care about the office or the position and only cares about how they can use what has been given to them for the benefit of those around them, even ultimately if it costs them the power and the authority and the prestige and the office. I mean, Jesus gives us the best example of a servant king. He gives us the example we're all supposed to follow. He gives us the example that every Christian ruler since his day is supposed to follow. You have been given power, but not for yourself, for those around you, for those you rule. The reason you have this power is for their sake, not for your own, not for your friends, not for the lobbyists, not for those who sponsor you or donate to you. The reason you have been given power is to help those around you who have nothing to actually give you back, give you in return. This is the example of Christ. This is the example that all of us are supposed to, to adhere to. This is the example we are supposed to strive to achieve, the standard we're supposed to reach for. I hope Singh means it. I really do. I hope he means it. And I hope other leaders, politicians, CEOs, executives, I hope they can see this as the beautiful thing that, that we do, as the valuable thing that we do. I hope they can grow to see their leadership, their power, their authority, not as a, a, a seat of prestige, not as simply an office that is used to enrich themselves, but rather something that they have been given for the sake of everyone around them. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray that you and I, pray that you and I in our communities, that we might be this kind of leader the kind of leader that doesn't care about the position of leadership or the power that comes with it or the authority that comes with it or honor and prestige that comes with it, but rather we would take the reins of those offices for the sakes of those we serve. That this would be the highest calling for us. Amen. Namultus.